day. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. So my name is Laurent. I'm the founder of Cast AI. Um, I live... Oh, it's going to come here soon with the slides. I live in the south of Toronto. That's called Miami. This is where, this is where I am most of the time. Um, should come to, oh, here it is. Yeah. So uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur. This is the third startup I do. The first one went to Google, and the second one went to Oracle. And yes, we are headquartered in Miami, and we have a big team in Europe. Um, I have a story to tell you about AI and how we came up with this idea of Cast AI. So in 2010, I met a gentleman called Tencent, and I show him my mobile phone. I told him, there's a GPU in that phone. It would be super cool we can use this GPU to train some AI model that can do real-time face detection and face rec recognition. And then it would be cool we do this also on the desktop, on servers, on the cloud. And we really would like to use your GPUs for that. Mr. Jensen was the CEO of NVIDIA, and we bought CUDA at the time. We were probably the first one to use it. So we know a lot of things about using GPU for machine learning training and for inference, meaning once you train the engine, you have to run it, and you need, still need some GPUs for this. So um, when you see these titles, from Gartner and from the Wall Street Journal, you feel this is a hype, especially the second one. Like there is the pressure mounts on CIOs to build more AI applications and faster. Why for? When you read this, this is hype. But let me tell you, we have many, many customers that are training their own model, and this is real. So yes, there is a hype right now, but just behind the hype, there are some real businesses that are being established to use these techniques to solve very, very hard problems. Right now, in the news and in the clouds, we see mostly companies trying to do training. And yes, for training, you need a huge amount of compute. And that amount of compute is very, very expensive. But once these machines have been trained, then we're going to use them. And I'm a lot more excited by the inference, which means the use of these machine learning engines to solve very, very hard to solve problems. And I, I want to say one more thing. Six months ago, ChatGPT came up. But guess what? All these techniques and technologies and startup existed a year before that. But at the time, we didn't hear about it because ChatGPT wasn't there. This is why there is a hype right now, but this is also why there is a real business behind it. The problem with this is that, <laughs> where are my GPUs? To do training, you need a lot of compute. The good thing with GPUs, they are very, very fast in doing training. I know I use them on an iPhone, and the iPhone would run 10 minutes before it would burn out because I would use all the batteries for, the, for my, my inference. But now, 10 years later, we know how to do this very, very well. GPUs can be 150 times faster than using CPUs. Sometimes they are only 10 times faster. And yes, they have a lot of issues, especially memory bandwidth that prevent the model to go faster. Issue is, they are very expensive, and this is how expensive they have. So I, I just took this screenshot three days ago. This is AWS. This is the price of the P4D, which is a 96-core machine that has a fantastic A100 from NVIDIA. And yes, it is 10 times more expensive than another machine that doesn't have the GPUs. 10 times more expensive, but it could be 100 times faster. OK, so I can pay 10 times. But if I'm only 10 times faster, then actually I should not use GPUs. GPUs are very hard to find. But that's not the only problem. And it doesn't have to be that expensive. So the reason is 
a lot of our customers, when we see what they do, have huge amount of compute in their account that is absolutely wasted. This is a screenshot here. I love this one. It's every time the same thing. This is a user of our product. The blue line is how many CPUs they think they need. So the amount of CPUs and GPUs is blended that they are paying, and this is AWS. The yellow line is the amount of compute they, that is required for the application. The difference between blue and yellow is a waste. But think about this. These machines are already 10 times more expensive when they have a GPU on it than the same machine without a GPU. And you are spending twice more than you should, at least on this one. By the way, this is typical of machine learning training. This is not inference. The reason is you need a huge amount of compute for a few hours. Then once you have finished your training, it goes down. The problem is, well, you provision it by 2x, and it doesn't go down very fast. This is using Kubernetes. So this is the, probably the best type of architecture you can think of, because you have containers coming up. They forget to reduce the amount of compute when these containers or this pod, these microservices, have finished to run. And so not only it is difficult to find these machines, but you actually think you're actually over-provisioned by 2x. And believe me, if you don't over-provision like this, the customer think that they don't have enough. So they will actually not run it, not knowing that they only need half of that. This is 99% of the cases of users that use our product when we first meet them. So this is not a small thing. And this is the 50% the to 70% is actually an average over hundreds of organizations that use us. So we ask an AI engine, and we really did it this way, and we ask the AI engine, can you optimize AI? Can you optimize this amount of compute so I don't need to over provision 2x? And this is what it did, and it's a true story. It says, well, if you need 1,000 or 6,000 CPUs, Maybe you can use cheap ones, or even GPU attached to the CPU. It's called a spot instance. And yes, it did cost a lot less. So this is an example of um, machine learning, a machine training for a very large pharmaceutical company in the US. It's something that only took an hour and 20 minutes, or 1.2 hours. It requested 45 machines. They're all almost the same and it costs $219. This is before optimization. And this is what happened when we asked the AI engine, please help me. And the AI engine said, OK, I'm going to find some lo much lower machine than you think you need, called a spot instance. And I'm going to do it automatically, but not all of it. Like you can see, only 20 machines are on spot, but four stayed on demand. So the AI engine is smart in thinking, OK, a piece of it will go on spot, and another piece will stay on demand. It took the same time, one hour, 1.21 hours. But it costs 76% less. Okay, so that's a great thing. But the first thing we ask the AI engine, which is, am I using the right type of machine? Can I use some cheaper one? Example, spot instance. And then we ask the engine to do something else. And this is a really exciting piece. We asked the engine, OK, now that you know how to find the best type of instances, can you do it also for the quantity, not just the quality of them? And this is what it did on a real example. So this is a real example of a company. It's a, it's a SaaS business. It's a unicorn. They are doing threat detection. They're using billions or millions of information news articles to find out threat level for their clients. Some of them are government organizations, and others are just commercial operations. If you are Coca-Cola, you want to know what is happening on the brand, and you want to know if there is any event somewhere in the world that may be a problem. I don't mean Coca-Cola is a client, I don't know, but that's the kind of customer they have. So 
typical of machine learning, they have a huge amount of volume of data. They have to train very carefully so they can identify the threat. And then they have to run this model on all data coming in real time, ingesting them and crunching them so that the engine can give them a good solution. This is before, typical. It went from a zero to almost 12,000 CPUs for a few hours. The same thing, the blue is what they pay, the yellow is what they need. And so we asked the AI engine, can you, can you do better than this? Can you optimize AI? And this is what it did. The engine says, yes, absolutely. And it, it really is like that. It did say, yes, absolutely, meaning it says, let me handle it. I know what you need. I am detecting that you need a huge amount of compute. I'm giving it to you. And uh, oh, I'm detecting you don't need anymore because the job is down. I'm going to drop them immediately as fast as I can. The difference is 89% efficiency. So now the, if you think, remember the first slide that says, oh my God, GPUs are 10 times more expensive than the same thing with CPU. My answer to this is you probably need three or four times less than you have thought by using some, some of these smart and clever, sophisticated autoscaler that will only supply what you need. The one before is the standard product on Google. It's called GKE. The one below is also GKE, it's also containers. But the difference is an AI engine is supplying the nodes, the machines, and is handling it, and is selecting them on your behalf. That's what you can do using AI to optimize AI. I have a few other examples. This one, the first one is an inference because it's, it uses a huge amount of compute, but for a long period of time. So it's running the engine. The second one is training because it's very narrow for a huge amount of compute for a very limited time. So this is on 2,200 CPUs for nine days. Can you imagine the difference between this and the first screen I showed you? That's the 90%, 80% more cost efficient. Not just cost efficient, it also means this customer found all the GPUs they need because they need a lot less than what they thought they were needing before. So it's two things, two angles to think about this, is once it costs less, but second thing is you can use it. This is another example, I have many of them. This is on 7,000 CPUs for three hours. And also here you saw the engine trying to go down as fast as it could from the 8,000 CPUs to 1,000 and then to zero. So if you think you spend too much on your cloud bill when you do AI training, it's normal and then hit me up when we can help you guys. Thank you very much.